we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done Oh the good times just begun I'm in a different room today so I hope that the audio is a little bit better with less echoing um, but today's video is a Bible study request and someone requested that I do a study on how to tell others about Christ. I don't know what this is. I probably should have went that way. <laughs> but how to tell other people about Christ. And the one thing that I can say about this right off the bat is to look at what God commands us to do. So in the Bible, I know I say this verse a lot, but it's important. Um, there was someone who asked God, what is the most important um, commandment? I'm sorry, someone asked Jesus, what's the most important commandment? And you see that Jesus answers this in Matthew 22, 35 through 40. And he says, the most important commandment is to love no God more than God. Put no other gods before me. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Notice that it doesn't say to judge the person first. It doesn't say to criticize them or to point out every flaw that they have. It says to love them. And I think loving somebody includes showing them what it is that Christ represents, doing something for them. And I think that's why I talk about doing something for someone else all the time. It's so easy to get caught up in your needs and what's going on in your life. But when you step out of that and you start to look around at those around you and figure out how you can do something for them, then that's when things start to change. Even if it's something small, right? You can write someone a letter that will make their day. You can help someone with their laundry. If someone has little kids, offer to come watch them so they can take a nap. It doesn't have to be anything monumental because then when someone sees you acting like that and doing things that are selfless for them, then they will ask you, you know, well, why is it? And actually that reminds me of a verse. And I think it is Hebrews. Let me find it. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. And again, that goes around to what I just said without judgment. So that's important. You can't, you know, share the love of Christ and then say, um, but it's a sin to live with someone if you're not married to them, you know, live with your boyfriend or girlfriend without being married to them, you know, because that just comes off as judgmental and people are not going to receive that. You have to start off with love. And I think that's why uh, the Bible, it says to love others, show others God's love by doing, you know, really nice things for them or being there for them supporting them loving them and then be ready to share when they ask you you know why why are you doing this for me you know and you can say because christ loves me and he shows love for me and i am here i believe in christ and i want to show that same love to you um, and christ loves you too and you could even like tell them about what god has helped you through and you can share your testimony but and I'm not saying that you have to do something for someone in order to share your testimony. I'm just saying that that opens up the conversation. So if you have a friend, if you're in high school still and they are struggling with math and you're good at math, help them with their math homework. I don't know. It's just, it's just an example. But do it with gentleness and respect. 
And this is super important because sometimes as Christians, we can become like the Pharisees. And if you know anything about Pharisees, they are the judgmental church leaders. And sometimes on this channel, I would have to say 95% of the comments and the people and the subscribers, you guys are just wonderful and you say wonderful things. And not to say that I don't get constructive criticism because I get that as well, loving constructive criticism and you guys are awesome about that. But there are some people who just say really mean and nasty things. Not that it bothers me, I don't care, but I just don't want someone who doesn't know Christ or who's a young um, Christian, not spiritually mature yet, um, to read something like that and be discouraged or to read something like that and think that that embodies Christianity and Christ himself when it doesn't. And so just be careful with the words that you say to someone and how you come across. First of all, no one is to judge anyone else. And I've said this before, we can judge the sin, not the sinner. God is the only one to judge. And that is biblical in the Bible. Um, but you know, you just have to work on it. <laughs> Do it with gentleness and respect. You can't walk up to someone that you don't know and criticize them for sinning. Um, you have to really get, develop a relationship with them. And then if you feel, you know, after prayer and seeking God, then you have to feel comfortable enough to say something to someone. There's only a couple of people in my life that I feel like I can say, you know what, can I just share something with you? Because I feel like God, you know, wants me to tell you this and they would receive it, you know, even if it's like bad, something bad, <laughs> even if it's, you know, constructive criticism and you have to really get there with someone. You can't just jump right in and, and say stuff like that. Um, and so if you want to tell others about Christ, one way you could be is just serving them, having a servant's heart. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples to show an example um, and then be ready to share the love of Christ when asked with gentleness and respect. So it's all goes around in one big circle. So, um, and maybe I'll do a whole Bible study on Pharisees. I'm actually going to be starting a series soon on women of the Bible. A friend <laughs> suggested this to me and it's something that was on my heart anyway. So I feel like it was just conversation confirmation. Um, but I'm going to do Bible studies on women of the Bible and I'm going to call it, um, girl boss. Because I feel like in today's culture, girl boss is like the independent woman who can pay all her bills and makes a lot of money. But what does girl boss really mean in the kingdom of God? You know, material stuff is not important. So we're going to take a look at women of the Bible and try to look at their qualities and things that we can apply to our life. And the first woman that we're going to look at is the Ruth. Um, so I'm going to read the entire book of Ruth. It's not that long and study it for myself. And so these studies would just be kind of like a character overview. It's not going to be a chapter by chapter that these women are um, presented in the Bible because that will come with the study the whole Bible with me series. It'll just look at the character of the person and maybe I'll make like a worksheet or something. I don't know. This is all jogging now in my memory. So that will be coming very soon. I'm going to be working on that. So let's all study the book of Ruth together. Um, but let me know if there's anything else that you want to see. I make Bible study videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I can't wait to study the Bible with you again. Bye.